happy to answer you. And if you don't have the answer, I think we will have the answer. But if we don't, we'll find out. And the recording will be sent back to you afterwards. So don't feel stressed to copy things down and all that kind of thing. Okay, I'll turn it over to Alyssa. Who is, uh, so take it away. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Jackie. Um, my name is Alyssa Aronson. I'm the director of uh, Communication Design Certificate Program. I'm really excited to be here and talk to you guys tonight. Um, first, we're just going to do, we have a, well, I'll explain. The agenda for tonight is for us to use the time until 6.30 to give you various perspectives on the program from different points of view. And then from 6.30 to 7, uh, we'll take your questions. Um, my presentation is going to be like five minutes and I'll talk to you about the program. And then each of our speakers will have like just a couple of minutes to talk because we have quite a few speakers, but I wanted to give you a range of perspectives. So before I, I launch into my short presentation, I just want to uh, have each person who's here as a speaker, just give their name and, and what's their role or, you know, affiliation with the, with the program. So, you know me, uh, Jackie already spoke. Um, Pao, you want to jump in? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Pao or Paulina, and I'm in level one uh, student certificate. So really excited to be here today. Thanks. Jim? Hi, my name is Jim. Um, I'm in the level two certificate program right now. Just started with UX design. And um, my day job is a high school graphics teacher. Thank you. Joe? Yeah, hi, uh, Joe Doucette. I am the uh, person in charge of admissions for all the certificate programs, um, including the graphic design or the communication design certificate program. Thank you, Joe. Hi, Alex. Hey, everyone. Alex Barbosa. I teach intermediate typography. Uh, Alicia. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Alicia. I'm the senior designer at WS Development, which is a retail development company here in Boston. And I graduated from the program, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And Lindsay. Hey guys, I'm Lindsay Hill, Principal and Creative Director of Lindsay Hill Design, um, an award-winning branding firm offering creative solutions. And I've been involved with the program in various facets that I'll get into when we break off and talk more. Okay. Thank you. And that's Brenna up in the corner, if you guys have the same layout that I do, <laughs> our marketing person. So um, I'm going to launch my presentation and uh, get my notes out here. Oops, go back to the beginning. All right. Uh, everyone can see that, right? Okay. So yeah. I'm the director. Oh, sorry. Yes. I'm going to say something. Yeah. Oh, all right, thanks. <laughs> I'm the director of communication design certificate program, but I'm also a graduate of the program. Uh, so first I wanna tell you about the program from uh, my perspective uh, from when I was a student and when I was uh, someone who looking to um, get a more fulfilling career than, than the one I had originally. Um, like many, oh, before I go on, I wanna mention all the images that you'll see in the presentation are student work from this program, um, current or recent grads of the program. So these are all student projects that they've created and designed in the program, um, everything that you're seeing in this presentation. Okay, so uh, like many people who uh, have joined this program, I found myself working in a job uh, after college that I liked but didn't really love. Um, but one day I was working, um, I was in marketing and um, the company I worked for hired a graphic designer to design a logo and some new branding materials for us. And when the designer presented their wonderful designs, I got really excited and thought, wow, this is this is something I could I could see myself doing because it was artistic, it was marketing, you know, it involved language, and I just thought it was really cool. Um, so uh, when I had a chance, I asked the designer, you know, how do you how do you prepare for for, for a career like this? And that was the first time I heard about this program, the Mass Art Communication Design Certificate Program. At that time, it was called the Graphic Design Certificate, and it was already well established as a great program for skill building in design and for career advancement and career launch in professional design. Uh, as I spoke with other designers, uh, several others also recommended the program. So that was the first thing that impressed me about the program. Um, that it was recommended by professional designers. 
when I looked into the program, uh, there were several aspects that I was really excited about because they fit uh, what I wanted. And I wanna tell you about some of these things because they're still very important to the program. Um, it was a part-time program with classes held evenings, occasional weekends. So I didn't have to do, you know, quit my job and go back to school. I could fit it in with my working, working lifestyle. Um, the program's affordable because you only take one or two classes at a time and you pay as you go. And also MassArt is a publicly funded college. So the costs are much less than many comparable uh, educational venues that are privately, privately run. The program is geared towards working adults focusing on real world professional design skills for job and career, but also on what creativity and what makes each person's work unique. You can test out the program by taking the first one or two courses in the course sequence. And if you then join the program, those courses will get transferred in. So you can you know, just test it out before you even apply to the program. And um, the, the skills needed were, uh, it wasn't a ton of, of skills needed to, to start the program, just basic uh, observational drawing and some basic skills in some of the Adobe Creative Suite programs. And um, many students get this job doing some design. It could be an internship or a junior design job, but while they're still in the program. So you don't have to complete the whole thing and then go out, look for a job. You can start working because you'll be getting portfolio projects for your portfolio all along the way. So you'll have stuff to show and, and people frequently do get, do get jobs in design before they're, they're actually finished. Um, so, uh, where was I? Um, my experience in the program was really great as a student and some of the best aspects, um, of the program at that time, which we continue to prioritize today are meeting like-minded people, uh, other students with shared interests and goals. You develop a really supportive and fun community of students that you see in class. Even though it's virtual, you have a chance to uh, connect with them in each class meeting. And you know they really become like supportive peers that, that help you along. Uh, we have great teachers, many of whom are or were professional uh, designers. So they teach from a real world perspective and they frequently have connections in the world of design who you can use for networking for jobs and so on. Um, in the program courses, I built a portfolio of work that I personally loved and that impressed potential employers and that enabled me to, to launch a, a career in design from something, you know, something else that I'd been doing. Um, I had the portfolio to get, to get design work. And I found the program had been great preparation for working in a professional design and a great launching pad for a job and freelance opportunities also. So my experience as a student in this program, which I've been talking about, um, still informs my approach to uh, running the program, um, which puts student experience and student outcomes first. Working closely with staff, our expert faculty, our alumni, and other professional designers who serve as portfolio reviewers, guest presenters, and guest critics uh, in our classes, uh, I'm committing committed to ensuring all the strengths I found as a student in the program are maintained while we continue to evolve the curriculum to keep up with rapid changes in uh, the design profession and in the technology that affects everyone. Uh, now that we're a fully online program, we continue to shape our classroom experiences to maintain the strong relationship building and personal interaction with students and instructors that have always been a strength of the program. Um, students are educated to gain strong skills in both traditional and contemporary ever-evolving interactive media. And applying to level one is really easy and quick. Students have the flexibility to determine what level of certificate is right for them, um, either from the start or as they go along. So that's, that's all for me. Thank you very much. I'll stop sharing. And uh, now I'd like to turn it over to Alicia. Hi, guys. Um, so I'm just going over my roles. Is that, is that right, Alyssa? 
Yeah, just your, you know, perspective on the program from your experience yeah. having been a student and now a designer. So I joined the program in my early 30s. I was in the restaurant industry for most of my adult life. Um, and I had always kind of done design sort of as a hobby, doing flyers for, you know, music industry, skate shops, that kind of thing. Um, and somebody recommended the program and it worked out great. You know, I was working full time. Uh, it was still manageable. I mean, it's tough, but it was manageable. You know, I was working two jobs at, at some point doing this, um, but it's great. And I think it does prepare you to sort of start working as you're in the program, which is really important because I think you find you sort of learn two sides of the coin, the working side and the, and the, what you're learning the school side, and it kind of works together really nicely. Um, so yeah, so I worked for a couple studios. I worked for Lindsay, who you will hear from. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, so now I'm the senior designer at uh, WS Development. They, if you're in the Boston area, you're probably familiar with Seaport. Any artwork you see up in the Seaport, I've probably touched. Um, Legacy Place, Derby Street, uh, Market Street, if you're in Massachusetts, and we've got places across the country. So I do a lot of signage. I do a lot of branding, do a lot of digital stuff, kind of like everything. And most of the stuff that I do for work now, it's in some way, I sort of, touched that sort of design work in the program. So it's been, it was super helpful for me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, Alex, over to you. Hey everyone. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I teach intermediate typography. A uh, little bit about me is I graduated from the undergrad program at MassArt in 2012. Started my career working in luxury hospitality for a couple of years and switched over to an ad agency and then finally a startup. Um, today, I'm an art director over at Zipcar. Um, I got my first start with this program just being a guest reviewer, guest presenter for Alyssa, and really found that I just love kind of seeing students' work and then kind of critiquing it. So when Alyssa asked me if I wanted to teach intermediate type, I jumped on it because um, I just love working with the students. Here, I have two, one of my past students and a current student. And, you know, I just really love just working um, with the ideas that students come up with and really forcing and needling in on typography. Um, it's fun for me. I enjoy it. Um, I know my students love it. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Pau? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm currently the marketing director at a multicultural marketing agency here in Boston. And um, how I learned about the program was that we've been getting more uh, clients that are looking for branding. And while I've been really able to like lead the workshops and everything, I really didn't have like the hard skills to lead any of the visual development of the identities. And so um, that's how I came about, like being interested in the program to really solidify those skills and be able to participate in that. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, this program so far. I've, I'm currently trying to finish level one. Um, and I think to my surprise, I'm already implementing a lot of the things that I'm learning. Um, you know, just like a couple of weeks ago, I know Jim's in my UX class, actually. We learned about a new method um, to brainstorm like catalytic questioning, and I've just implemented it into a brainstorm. So I think it's uh, everything that we're getting has really uh, relevant, um, you know, knowledge and application in your day to day. So I think it's it's really a, a wonderful program, and I can attest that Alex is a great <laughs> teacher. So I'm really enjoying that class as well. Thank you. Okay, Jim. Hi. Um, so I'm uh, my background is uh, was more in illustration, and uh, I've been teaching high school art for a long time. Uh, right around COVID, our, our department head uh, retired and I found myself uh, teaching the graphic design classes um, because otherwise the program was going to end at our school. So I was like, I'll teach them. Um, so, you know, I wanted, I knew for professional development, I really wanted um, a little more formal training in graphic design. Um, so I found the program, just, you know, the reputation of mass art as having really good programs. Um, so... Uh, it's it's been great. Um, my goal, you know, was to develop my skills and bring it into the classroom, um, which I've really been able to improve my curriculum and and my instruction. Um, another personal goal of mine was to build a professional portfolio, um, and the program is really geared towards that. You know, just 
kind of building your program over time and through the different levels. So um, it's it's been great. It's really worked well with my schedule. I'm, I'm pretty busy, but um, I found that the pacing of the, of the class works really well. Um, I love, I look forward to every week kind of looking at and talking about design and creating design and, um, you know, hearing, learning from my professors and uh, the other students in the program are really strong. Their work is really great. And um, it's been a great experience. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. All right, Lindsay. Lindsay, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry, I'm Lindsay Hill again. I own Lindsay Hill Design. I think I'm the only speaker tonight that has not gone through the program. Is that right? But I am well, very. Alex went through Mass Art undergrad, so he was. Okay. He was okay. He's not alumni of certificate program, but that's great. You're okay, only, you're only now Mass Art alumni. <laughs> Got it. So I have been in business for longer than all of you guys have been alive. I would venture to guess, which is forever. Um, I have had art and design in my blood since I was a kid. My father was an architect, mother and grandmother, artists, fine artists. Alyssa was one of my very first freelancers way back in the day, if you can believe wow. that, which is crazy. I love that story. I've been a huge supporter of the program for so many years and in various capacities. I've been a portfolio review panelist. I've been a guest lecturer. I am currently um, both of those and a professional mentor. I work with some of the students that are struggling. And I love that part. Um, I've been a guest teacher for a handful of workshops with Alyssa's. And I think one of the most important things for the program is that I actually employ a lot of the students either during the program or after they've graduated from. My experience is that when I'm doing the portfolio review panels, I get to actually pick the cream of the crop students to come work for me along, you know, a lot of, a lot of the other review panels do the same thing. Um, and it's a great experience for all of us. It's, it's really a win-win for both the student and for myself and the other professional mentors. I get to pick the cream of the crop students. I give them real world hands-on experiences. Um, I get to kind of morph and work with them. You know, Alyssa, I'm working with three other students that are graduates of the program right now. I'm working with, I don't know if any of you guys know these people, but Rob Sergal is one of my freelancers. Chris Santoro, I work with all the time. Oh. I was working with Pamela Maestro for quite a while, but that I think she took a full-time job somewhere. I love working with her. And I'm starting to work with Lucy Glover, who's from the undergraduate, Alex, the undergraduate degree program. Um, I would say that my general impression of the program is, is it's hands down my go-to program. I think extremely highly of it. I would recommend it very much. I mean, look at like Alicia, just speaking the truth of how she got through the program and she was working two jobs and she was working her butt off and we collaborated during COVID and we survived. And, you know, I, again, I'll, being a little redundant here, working with the students for typically, I don't know, one to three years. And at that point, they're ready for a new experience. I'm ready for new fresh blood to come in. I introduce them to all my colleagues, which is vast in the Boston and further realm. They move on and get a job in like a big agency. I'm quite small and I get new students in. Um, it's great. I have nothing but great things to say about it. Thank you, Lindsay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm humbled by all these wonderful it's, things. People have yeah, said. it's great. I applaud it. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, I think we're ready to turn it over to Joe for some of the nitty gritty info about applications. Uh, so or... <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't skip anyone, did I? Sometimes I forget people. I don't think so. Mm. All right, sorry, go ahead, Joe. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thanks for some great words about the program. Um, so if you're interested in applying, um, the application is open right now. So it opened on February 1st. There are two deadlines, one for summer and one for fall. So a summer start and a fall start. The summer start deadline is April 15th and the fall start deadline is June 15th. Uh, you can choose either semester. If you go onto the application site, you'll see there's a choice for summer or fall. Um, so uh, obviously, you know, the deadlines coincide with those two things. So there's a lot of time to apply still for either semester start. Um, it's a pretty basic application. Um, if you're starting to apply for level one, um, it's uh, just an application fee, statement of purpose, 
Um, statement of purpose really is just uh, talking about yourself and what you want to do in the program. Um, you do need um, transcripts if you're planning to advance into level two or three. You don't have to give them to this to us if you're applying for level one. But if you plan to go on to level two and three, it's a good idea to give us your transcripts ahead of time because we're going to have to ask you for them later on. So um, that's one thing. But you don't have to have them if you don't have them. They're not a requirement for level one. But they are for two and three. So if you're applying for level two and three, you'll need transcripts um, of 60 college credits or a uh, essay telling us about your experience and what you want to do and why you uh, should be considered for an advanced level, either two or three, instead of level one. Um, I think that's about it for now. Uh, I think I've got it all. Um, like I said, the, the, it's a pretty straightforward application. We try to do review them on a rolling basis. So if you apply this week, you should hear within two weeks whether or not you've been accepted. Um, and that'll go on through June 15th and uh, April 15th for summer. Okay, great. Um, oh, well, and I will, uh, I'll, I'll link in my uh, email address and email address. yeah, and the site and the, the URL for where the application is on the website in the chat. Great. Okay. Wow. We actually finished like a few minutes ahead of schedule. It's unusual, but um, good because it just means we have more time for Q and A. Um, does before we do Q and A, anyone have anything else that they need to say that they got to say or whatever? All right then. Actually, Alyssa. Alyssa. Yes. I, I, I'm just referring back to my notes from last year, the same info session, and I think one. Really important thing that I neglected to say a minute ago, uh, one of the questions that you prompted us as speakers last year was how to grads of the program compare to other candidates, which is really important because I do hire other candidates outside of mass art, believe it or not. Um, but I will say that the mass art graduate students, the graduate, the subject the you guys are thinking about, um, are typically more mature, focused and dedicated in their career paths as they have already completed their undergraduate degree. Right. And well, I just, that's I not, gonna say, it's, uh, we've, it's, we've shifted it a little bit. I mean, most of our graduates historically have had college degrees. Um, we've opened it up a bit more now. Um, although I would say, um, most still do have, uh, a, some college, but we are, we're now accepting people into level one who don't have any college background and, and they can be considered to go on to level two or three. Um, under you know certain circumstances, but okay. you're right. I mean, you know, so that we, get, we get yeah. serious, serious people, people that really, you know, want to commit the, themselves yeah. to, to their making, doing. They know the more they put into it, the more they'll get out of it. And know? I think that's really yes. important for you guys to take into consideration while you're considering this decision, right? Um, the key skills that I look for when I hire and typically it's mass art graduate students this degree is a desire to learn, the desire to apply their knowledge and creativity, attention to detail, curiosity, and being a team player. And you learn all of these skills in this program. Now I'll stop talking. <laughs> you don't have to stop talking, but thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Jackie and Brenna, do you guys wanna manage the Q&A? Sure. Um, if, your expertise. if you feel comfortable, go ahead and unmute or put questions in the chat and we will answer them. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm Catherine. Um, I currently, I go to Cape Cod Community College um, and I'm studying graphic design. Uh, I applied for the fall semester for graphic design, but I was also considering doing the certificate. I mostly was just wondering what the difference is really like, um, because when I went to Cape Cod, when I started, I didn't realize that you can't really do much with an associates in graphic design is what a lot of my advisors told me and people told me. So I was like, okay, what's the next step? And I was kind of, I heard about the certificate and I was like, oh, well, that sounds cool. But I, I just wasn't sure what the difference would be between the two. Um, 
Okay, good question. So in your associate's degree, like how many graphic design courses did you have? Um, so I took all the courses that um, mass transfer said I needed in order to transfer to mass art. So I think it was like um, mass art accepted like seven, I think seven of them. Um, so I just took the ones that were on the list that would transfer over. So a lot did, of you basic, apply, like, did you apply to the mass art undergraduate program? Yeah. Would, okay. So are you asking about what's the difference between the mass art undergraduate program and the certificate program? Yes, I guess between like a bachelor's degree in graphic design and like the certificate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, um, do you want me to say something? Different. I'm sorry. Do you want me to say anything about it or you're all, you can. Oh, um, you can start. <laughs> I was just going to say that the degree, first of all, takes place during the day. It's four years and it's just, it's a bigger, it's a bigger commitment. You still get, you get the portfolio and so on. And you also have to take things like history and, you, you know, liberal arts. It's a rounded uh, liberal arts kind of education in, in as well as the design classes. But you you can take electives and you know other departments and that's the another that's a plus for it. Okay, right. thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, mean, I, think a, I think the bachelor's is like 120 credits and our certificate is 37. Exactly. So that's it's a bigger commitment. It's a full time program. I mean, in terms of like what you get, uh, what you get out of it, um, you know, the Mass Art BFA um, undergraduate communication design major is fantastic. I mean, it's really top, top, top notch. So they do have some opportunities that we don't have in uh, our program because you know our program we try to keep it like really limited so people aren't you know going part time forever and ever. Um, also, the undergrads have courses on campus, which our program is all online. So that, you know, that could make a big difference too. Um, yeah. But I would say that the, isn't, the point it really is to have a good portfolio. I don't think whether, I don't know if people are looking at associate's degree or certificates. I think they're looking for a great portfolio and maybe somebody, Alyssa or Lindsay could talk about that. I'm not sure. Well, well, I mean, I, I would I would just put it this way. I would never discourage anyone who is considering, you know, going for a, a four year degree from doing mm -hmm. it, because especially I don't know where you, where you are, but here in Massachusetts, you know, a lot of people do look for like a, B, a BA or a BFA or a BS rather than an associates. The certificate um, is uh, in terms of portfolio. Yeah, you you know, you can definitely get the portfolio to get to get jobs good, and good jobs. But, yeah. you know, there are some employers that still want to see, you know, that you have the degree. And in terms of the experience, you know, of, of being with a cohort for four years and having courses on campus or living in a dorm, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that can be, you know, worthwhile just in itself. Um, you know, kind of varies from individual to individual. Yeah. If you want to you know, talk more about your specific goals and situation, you can email me and we can get into it a little bit more. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, can I? I just want to point out one thing that was wasn't mentioned in this uh, conversation. Um, so, if you're applying for the undergrad program and you say, "Oh, I want to apply for the certificate as well," you cannot do both at the same time. So, you would need to choose one or the other. Um, people have done the certificate after they've graduated, and that would be perfectly fine if you decided you wanted to. Once you got to Mass Art. If you were accepted, you say, oh, geez, I really want to be in the illustration department instead. Um, you know, people make uh, different decisions when they when they get accepted. They sometimes come in with one idea and walk out with another and then say, oh, geez, I really wanted to really focus on, on um, communication design. So maybe I could do the certificate afterward or if you don't have enough communication design. So just I'm just wanted to let you know you cannot do both at the same time but you know you can get a whole broad spectrum of art education um, if you were an undergrad and then if you want to focus later you could definitely do that people have done it 
Yeah, I think I just wanted to weigh my options because I was like, what should I do next? And I wanted to know if there was any class differences. Like, I understand it's it's a more expedited program and it's more um, accessible to people. I think I just wanted to know um, if there was any major differences as far as like the classes and stuff are concerned. But yeah. it seems like there isn't much. It's It seems like a great program. I, I'm just trying to figure out what my next yeah, step sure. is. Yeah. Of course. One, yes. one other you. crucial thing, though, is um, there's no aid available for the program. So... If you needed financial aid for school, yeah. you can't only get it as an undergrad. You can't get it as a certificate student in this communications design program. Okay, yeah, that's for financial aid. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say for financial aid, you need to have a certain number of credits per semester. And because our courses are are often one at the most two, you know, courses per semester, we don't have that regular. And the, and also, it's you know, the the the, the levels are fairly short. Um, so it, our certificate program doesn't qualify, students don't qualify for federal financial aid. Yeah, that's, that's important to know. Okay, thank you. More questions? Hi, I'll hop in here. So great to hear from all of you. I feel like I have a similar background to a bunch of you who have talked about your experience in the program. So this has been great. A um, couple more nitty gritty questions. What's your typical cohort size? Like what's the kind of the size of the group we'd be working with? And then I'm also currently working full time. So what's the typical, I love the idea of evening classes. Is it usually once, twice a week? Like what's that usual weekly pace looking like? Um, okay, I'll answer that. And then I'll let our students and alumni jump in on the on the second part of the question. But now I forget, what was the first part of your question? Uh, cohort size, how many people oh, are usually cohort size. in your level? <laughs> um, well, our, the, the class size uh, sizes are limited um, due to the fact that we want each student to, to get, you know, a good amount of individual critique on their projects. Um, I mean, in the courses I teach, which are the more, more foundational level, I can take up to 12 or 13 or 14 people. Um, but um, then as, as you get higher in the sequence and your work gets more complex and you need more time to look at, you know, it's like a whole website or the students are now doing like this cookbook prototype, there's all these different pieces, the social media, whatever. Um, we are, 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 I think our 15, 14 person cohort is, we split into two sections, I think with like nine and one section and 10 and another or something like that. Um, so, you know, uh, we can take as many students as, uh, as you know, want to come and are qualified because we're an online program. We don't have to worry about, you know, rooms. We can hire more instructors. But in terms of like how many students we would put with an instructor where, you know, it's a once a week course for three hours a week, um, we just want to keep that to um, only as many as, as can get, you know, really good feedback during that time so i would say that the you know the class sizes are um you know nine to nine at the most sometimes we have 16 or 17 but we add another teacher so they another critic so we've got a bunch of situations going on like that now it depends on how many how many students there are who want who are ready to take a certain course how do we you know can we put them all together do we need more than one teacher so um it's a weird answer but that's that's kind of the answer <laughs> Um, in terms of working full time and doing the program at the same time, um, I will just mention that there are a couple of semesters where there, where if you want to, well, Jim can answer, speak to this also because, you know, we have this this sort of what I call the standard schedule, in which case you can you know finish finish um, you know at the at the fastest uh, pace. Um, but some students choose to go more slowly and it takes them longer to finish, but they can, you know, manage that better with their time frame. So there's flexibility for that. Um, there are a couple semesters where you take two classes at the same time. Most semesters you're taking only one course at once. Um, in the fall and spring, uh, the most of the courses are just once a week, uh, 6.30 to 10 p.m., you know, every Wednesday night or every Tuesday night or whatever. And the summer courses move, uh, we have them sometimes at twice a week because this, you know, sometimes the summer courses are just June and July, you only have eight weeks. So in that case, you might be in a course that meets every Monday and Thursday. Um, 
uh, Pao and Jim and Alicia, if you guys want to address like how do you how do you make it work while you're also working? Uh, you know, I always tell people how? when I was in the program my last um, year or so, which when it's like gets really intense, um, I was working two jobs and planned and had my wedding. So if I can do that, you can definitely make it work. It's just, I mean, it's time management. And I think the further along you get in the program, you kind of like will get into a groove where you're going to be working a lot faster. You're going to know what you're doing a lot more. So, you know, just be aware of it from the start, um, you know, set your, set your future self up, you know, get organized, stay organized, that kind of thing. Um, but I think it's manageable. You just have to be smart about it. I'd like to add that. So in the fall semester, I took two classes and then took one like in the winter break. And then now I'm taking two. Um, I'm also working full time. And I agree with Alicia that it's a lot of organization. But also, I think the way that the course is structured, um, you get like in class critique and like feedback, which you can implement right away after your critique. And sometimes there's like working sessions even within your classes so that you can act on the feedback that you were just given. So I think you make a lot of progress in the classes. Um, and I think there's also a lot of help outside of the classes if you have like questions or if you, you need like further input. And so I think that um, it makes it a lot more manageable. Um, but of course, as we've heard here, like it does take commitment and it does take dedication and and, and the more that you invest in it, the more that you will get out of it. So um, that, that would be just my one recommendation, but it, it is doable for sure. So Jim, you've kind of created your own path. I mean, you're taking the, you know, the courses, the, the required courses in the required order, but you're kind of making your own schedule to fit your lifestyle, yeah. right? Yeah, so I, th I think I had one semester where I might have taken two courses at the same time, but, um, you know, um, Alyssa has been great as far as showing me kind of the pathway and like explaining what my different options are. Um, so for the most part, I've taken one course um, a semester. I did take the one winter intercession um, one time. So, uh, and I, I was very concerned about that getting into the program um, because, you know, between teaching and I'm a dad. I have two kids. I um, <laughs> I coach, um, so it's you know it's it's a busy life. But um, I, I found that it's been it's been manageable, and um, I'm proud of the work that I'm creating. I feel good about it, and um, so yeah, it's it's worked out well. And the just the one class, and all my classes have been between I think between eight and. I think our the UX class that I'm in right now is probably the larger of the classes, but um, there's a uh, another there's a teaching assistant working with the um, professor to help kind of so that when we we break into two critique groups and and that helps a lot. Great, thank you. These have all been super helpful, so thank you so much. Other questions? Anything? There's some. Things in the chat. I don't know if those are questions or notes from us. No so questions in the chat. Any questions um, about the? Oh, sorry. I I have a question. Uh, um, sorry. Um, so I hope this hasn't been addressed before. Um, I was a little bit late to the meeting because I've been sick. Um, but I was wondering. So are the courses um for the certificate program, um. Do the professors who 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 teach them are do they also teach like undergrad or um um currently i don't think we have any uh overlap with the undergrad teachers occasionally we do sometimes there's been uh, an undergrad teacher who basically you know wants to to teach another course um and you know they love to have the evening students because it's, it's different than having you know the undergrads. Um, we don't have anyone right now. Uh, I don't think who's doing both. Um, sometimes there are, there are teachers that that do are you know kind of foot in one foot in one program a foot in the other program. Um, you know we kind of I I coordinate with them in terms of our curriculum and seeing what they're doing and so on. 
Um, but I don't think right now we don't we don't have any any uh, of the same teachers. Okay, thank you. Welcome. No, and I wanted to add to that, Alyssa. Um, I know a lot of the faculty that do teach in the continuing ed certificate program are also working designers during the day as well. So yeah. a lot of the people who are teaching are actively every day working within the field. Um, so there's that added benefit as well. Right. Yes. Most of our teachers want to teach at night because they're working as designers during the day rather than, you know, teaching undergraduates during the day. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> the questions. Um, I have a question. I, if, is there an ability to, if you want to start the, like apply and then if, if you're accepted and start the, um, design certificate in the summer, um, is April 15th, that is like, that's the, the, de the deadline for applying for that? Yes. Yeah, that's the, that's the application deadline for, for a summer start. Summer starts yeah. at the end of May, so it's so it's yeah, kind it's of it's not really. I mean, it's a it, it's a deadline that's sort of important because it needs to we need to onboard people, um, and that takes a couple of weeks. So the right. next one after that yeah. is June fifteenth, and it's a little looser, so we have a lot more space in between June fifteenth and the beginning of September um, to get people onboarded. But um, gotcha. yeah, the April fifteenth is is the deadline. Um. That's that's Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, um, like, if you're accepted to the summer certificate, that would start in in June, or yeah, um, the summer the summer courses start at the end of May, so okay. right after Labor Day. There's uh, that they go until generally first or second second week of August. Generally, um, that's the whole semester. Um, sometimes okay. they're You'll have a, a class that'll start in, you know, the middle of June. And as Alyssa said, it's a shorter class because it meets twice a week instead of once a week. So the summer schedule is very jumbly. It sort of depends on the class. During fall and spring, the classes all are once a week meetings. So they meet once a week from 6.30 to 10 generally. Um, so if you took one class, it would be one meeting a night. If you took two, it would be two meetings per week. Uh, but in the summer, it, it sort of depends on the class. It can be a little funkier. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, um, so the difference between applying in the summer, uh, starting in the summer or starting in the fall, um, it actually won't get you kind of ahead um, faster. If you start in the summer, it would just give you the ability to take one course in summer and one course in fall rather than two courses in fall. So some people okay. like that. Uh, you know, because it takes the pressure off, especially in the fall. You'll already have one course done, and, one, and then you just take one in the in the in the fall. Um, and yes, I mean, we do uh, the the summer courses that you'd have the options of taking in the in this in the summer. Yeah, one of them starts the last week of May. The other one starts first week of June. Um, so we want we want to get people who are going to start in the summer into the program by middle of April, because we have all this stuff we have to do to, to you know, get you enrolled in the program and registered for your courses and stuff like that. Um, but for applying level one, remember, it's just really, really simple. There's no portfolio, there's no recommendations. Your statement of purpose is not like a college admissions essay that you labor over forever. Mm -hmm. um, we really just want to make sure that that this is the right program for you. You know, sometimes I'm reading an essay and the person's just talking about fashion and I'm like, I think we should tell them this isn't a fashion program. Sure. So we just want to know, you know, what's your interest in this program? Uh, you know, do you want to do UX? Do you want to do marketing or design websites? I mean, you don't have to be super specific, but we just want to really make sure that this is, you're in the right place. Um, so, and as Joe says, you know, we, we review them um, as an ongoing basis. So there's no reason to, you know, wait until the deadline, because if you applied next week, you'd probably, you know, hear from us the week after. Um, so um, we encourage people, especially if you're thinking about starting in the summer to, you know, apply sooner rather than later. And you're not committed, you know, you, you get accepted, you still can decide to do something else. Um, I'll also <laughs> throw in there, if you, if you apply for summer, um, and you get accepted for summer, and then you say, 
I I don't I can't start in the summer suddenly. You can defer till the fall. Oh, yeah, this is you, know, you just have to tell me and I can make that happen. Um, so, you know, it's not a high pressure thing, um, but you it just requires some some communication. That's all. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to mention nobody's asked, so maybe I shouldn't mention. Uh, um, but if you if you want to apply, like if you have some graphic design experience, either courses or, um, you know, sometimes people just find themselves working doing graphic design work, even though they they didn't uh, train for it, and then they decide they want to, you know, get some real education. But if you're if you're not sure if you have skills that might uh, allow you to to start, like at level two. Um, you should definitely email me to, to check in on, about that and I can advise you, you know, um, yes, you have enough to start at level two. Most people think they do, but actually don't because our level two is pretty high level. Um, but you might, you might be able to get credits for some of the, um, courses you've already taken if they're graphic design courses, or you might be able to get portfolio credit based on the work. Um, so in that case, I'd need to see your work and, and, um, you could either submit it just through the portal, I think, just add a port, add, you know, attach a portfolio, or write to me, and, and we can, you know, we can look at it offline and give you advise you from there about, you know, applying. The other thing I wanted to mention was prerequisites. So um, we don't, you know, check these; they're not required for getting into the program. But for, to start the courses, Foundations of Graphic Design and Typography, which are the first two courses. We do require that students have some background in uh, basic drawing from observation, which means not from your imagination, but from like a still life in front of you um, or figure drawing. And also the basics of some of the Adobe programs, Photoshop, Illustrator and, and InDesign. So what some people do is um, they apply to start in the fall and then they, they spend the summer, you know, just working on their drawing skills and, and Adobe uh, computer skills so that they're ready to start in the fall. So that's, that's an opportunity that you have since you're looking into this now. Anything if, else? Nobody, if nobody has any other questions, I, I have a couple, I have a couple short ones. <laughs> Go for um, it. There, Catherine, jump in. I'm like a question person. Um, the, so I had another quick question. I don't know if this is like a dumb question or not but um if you were to take like a typography class or something in the certificate class like if in the summer I got into the summer and I took it like a typography class and I decided that I wanted to go in the fall to the undergraduate would can that transfer can that credit transfer or no is it completely um you know it's not completely different but there the undergraduate typography classes are sort of these like double classes there. Our courses are six college credits and some of theirs are, I mean, our courses are three college credits and some of theirs are six college credits. So instead of having, you know, like 45 hours of classroom time in the semester, there's like 80 hours of classroom time. I mean, you, you have these long five hour classes. So I think, um, you know, in that case, they're, they're doing a lot more in the course. Okay. Um, I and would then, say it would actually, if you were to do that, um, you wouldn't need to apply to the program to do that. You could just register for it through the continuing ed website, register and pay for it. And um, the class likely would transfer as open studio credit. Oh, to, to yeah. Undergraduate degree. You could uh, probably transfer as an elective. Yep. Yeah. But not for oh. the major. Um, no, it wouldn't go toward the major. It would, it would likely go toward as an elective. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That kind of segues into my other quick question, which was um, the length of the courses. So like the level one, um, how long is the level one? Is it like a semester or is it like a year? Like how long? Okay, good question. Um, thanks, Lindsay. Lindsay has to go. Uh, level okay. one. So if you start, <laughs> if you start in the fall, um, you, and I have all this like in charts and everything, I'm not going to pull them up now because it would take too long to find them. But um, level one, if you start in the fall, uh, you take two courses in the fall, you take one course in the, um, during the January break, it's like a two week kind of extended workshop intensive thing. And then you take, um, one course in the spring and that's level one. So it's four courses, three of which are like full semester courses, one of which is short. 
Um, if you're planning to go to level two, then you actually start level two at the same time as you're finishing level one. It's kind of weird conceptually, but it makes sense in, in real life. And then level two is uh, a UX course in spring, a course in summer, and then uh, a portfolio course in the fall. So basically you could start level one, you know, in, a, in fall and then in September, in fall 2024, and you would complete level two with a nice portfolio in December of 2005. And then if you went to level three, that would be like the full year of 2006 from, you know, of course in January, of course in the spring, of course in the summer, portfolio of course in the fall. Yeah. Okay. I think I have a better view of like what it would look like. So thank you. That helped. Sure. And again, if you email me, um, I can put my email in the chat. I can, I can send you a, one of the charts where you can see it laid out, which is, as a graphic designer, I'll tell you it's much better than try, my trying to explain it. Yeah, that would I be just, great. Picturing it in your head, it's like, no, I have a layout for it. Yeah, right. I'm like a list person, right. so it'll be good. <laughs> That's my email, and any, anybody, any of you guys could email me about, about anything. I just have a fun question for Alex. What's your favorite project to teach in your class? <laughs> well, there's only two projects, so that means the other one is not the favorite. <laughs> I want to hear um, it. <laughs> I love teaching the cookbook project. It's the first project you start off at uh, at class one. We start pulling together concepts for like, what's a cookbook you want to make? Um, and we spend weeks developing a concept, doing first drafts, working in grids, and then throughout the semester, we keep adding things into it. And then by the end, you know, you've learned typesetting, grids, concepting. Um, I even have a mini lecture on photo selection because it's stuff that I've experienced as a, a real world designer. Um, and I try to bestow that knowledge to my students of like, hey, in the real world, this wouldn't fly, but this is my class and it's still not going to fly, you know, like, let's try to get as close to real world experience. So um, the cookbook's my favorite project. There's been a lot of great cookbooks that have kind of come together. Um, yeah. The cookbook's great portfolio project because it, like Alex says, it covers a lot of skills. You got to come up with an idea that's interesting. People generally come up with something that they first pers personally feel excited about. So when you show a project like that to an employer, not only do they see your skills, but they they see you know what what interests you, what what gets you excited. So, so often people do a cookbook from their their culture or their ethnicity. Sometimes people have uh, you know their grandmother's recipes. Other people do. Or there's everything from like surfing cookbooks to cookbooks for people that don't ever want to cook. I mean, there's someone now uh, in Eleni's class who's part of her background is Jewish and part of it is. Um, Korean, so she's doing this like hybrid, you know, Korean uh, Jewish recipe cookbook. I, I mean, it's, it's fun stuff, and it's it's a lot of work, but it, they they do make great great portfolio projects. Thanks for the question, Brenna. <laughs> um, um, I just we, oh. oh sorry, I have a question about kind of what the post certificate community looks like. Um, sort of even just after. Being part of level one are there like you know alumni events or like networking opportunities even just for level one or like would it be more geared towards someone who's gone through the entire um certificate um well uh level one yeah i mean everyone is is on the list <laughs> um the, technically you know in terms of like the, the paperwork or whatever you want to call it, digital paperwork each level is a separate program. So when you complete level one, you actually are like an alumni, you know, of mass art. So you, you know, you can access everything that that the alumni at the college can, can access, even if you only do level one. Um, so yes, you're, you're definitely part of the community. And sometimes people come back, you know, they do level one, they are able to, you know, get a job or they have something going on and they can't continue right then. And then, you know, a couple of years later, they, they say they want to pick up again. And, and you know, you definitely can, can do that. Um, so, yeah, we try to keep you as, as part of our community. For sure. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Two more minutes.
Um, I'll just, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm you know, um, I, I'm so sorry. Um, this is really kind of a quick question. Um, I, I hope, I don't know if you guys addressed this earlier in the meeting, um, but I was wondering uh, for kind of the basic classes in level one, like how, how, how basic is the the starting point because i know you said the pre prerequisites are like observational drawing and just some knowledge of adobe but is it like down to like let's talk about parts of you know a letter form or is it yeah. assuming some sort of prior <laughs> knowledge about, let's, oh yeah how is shaking your head we talk about parts of letter forms yeah we'll okay talk, we, we start with the beginning but then by the end of the course, you're, you know, I mean, you know, by about four or five weeks, we're already like laying a laying out a resume. By the end of the course, you're, you're, you're doing like a four page, you know, magazine feature. So, um, okay. so sometimes people come in and they have had some of that basic stuff, but yeah. you know, they haven't had like the second half of the course. Um, and with foundations of graphic design, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really about design elements and principles. So. You know, a lot of people have drawing backgrounds, painting backgrounds, illustration, but they really haven't looked at design at, you know, color and line and shape and all those elements of forms from a real design perspective. But if you yes. do feel like, you know, this sounds too basic for you, um, you know, it's possible that you could bypass those courses. Like I said, if you have, um, you know, a portfolio that shows that, that you already know that stuff, I wouldn't make you retake it. You might be able to get credit for it and then start at a, at a higher place in the program right I honestly I I have um I have a design degree um it, it was from um like a combined communications design program so I focus mostly in illustration um so I've I've had those classes but my portfolio really doesn't have any design in it so I think I could probably use a refresher on the basics but yeah thank you awesome. for letting me know. sure cool um okay I, I would really like to wrap up on time, although I'm I'm willing to stay a little bit if people have more more questions. But I want to make sure everybody who uh, all our panelists are free to go. Um, and I'll so just say, all. oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sending out brother. the uh, recording. And I also, Alyssa, tell me if this is a good idea. I included the Design 101 in case people are interested in like just learning the basics um yeah that's fine except i'm okay. teaching it saturday so if you exactly it's <laughs> a little you gotta, you gotta sign up really quickly but i'm also okay, teaching well summer. it's a one day you know kind of like intro to design class that i teach it's called design 101 so yes that's that's fine if that's that. okay oh perfect uh, you... <laughs> yeah. awesome. <laughs> So I'll include a link to that, the recording, and everyone's contact information. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for, you. Thanks thanks for you. your questions. Thank you all. Thank you all.